Welcome to Ezekiel Academy YouTube channel. In this lecture, I want to examine IAS 20, Accounting for Government Grants and Disclosure of Government Assistance. If you are just coming across my lecture for the first time, please make sure you like the video and also share it with others. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you for being part of this channel. Government grants are assistance by government in the form of transfers of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. The assistance by government in the form of transfers of resources to an entity in return for past or future compliance with certain conditions relating to the operating activities of the entity. So, the general principles of government grant, general principles. We will categorize the principles into two. Number one principle is prudence. Prudence. Accountants should not recognize the anticipated profit. So, by prudence in principle in relation to government grant, grants should not be recognized until the conditions for receipts have been complied with. And there is a reasonable assurance that the grant will be received. Grants should not be recognized. Grants should not be recognized until the conditions until the conditions for receipts for receipts have been complied with and there is a reasonable assurance that the grant will be received. You should not recognize government grants in the financial statements until the conditions, until the conditions for the receipts of that grant have been met, until the conditions for the receipts of the grant have been complied with. And you are certain, and there is a reasonable assurance that the grants will be received. So it is when you are very sure that the grant will be received and the conditions attached to the receipts of the grant have been complied with. It is then that the government grant can be recognized in the financial statements. Then number two, we have the accrual principles or accrual concepts. Once the above conditions have been met, grants should be marked with the expenditure towards which they are intended to contribute. Once The above condition have been met. That is, you are there is a reasonable assurance that the grant will be received and the conditions attached to the receipt of the grant have been complied with. Then once that conditions have been met, grant. Should be marked. Be marked with the expenditure. Expenditure towards which they are intended to contribute. You should match it. 
by matching it with the expenditure, it means you should set it off. You should deduct it from the expenditure towards where they are intended to contribute. Suppose government grants were received as a contribution towards the payroll. If the total payroll of the firm, if the total payroll is 100 million, and the grants of 30 million dollar was received as a contribution towards that payroll, then you are going to set it off. You deduct the grant. We, we have 100 million minus 30 million. Then that means you'll be left with 70 million. So that grant, you match it. By matching it, it means it should be deducted from the total payroll. We deduct it from the expenditure towards which they are intended to contribute. That is the general principles for accounting for government grants. Types of government grants. There are two types of government grants. We have number one, grants related to income, that is revenue grants. And then we also have grants related to assets, grants related to assets, that is called capital grants, capital grants. So, grants related to income, that is revenue grants. These are grants related to income, other than those that relate to a particular asset. Grants related to income. These are grants related to income, other than those related to an asset. That means the contribution for such grants are not related, they are not for the acquisition or construction of an asset. So, if the contribution to payroll, if they relate to the item in the profit or loss, we refer to that as grants related to income. The purpose at which those grants were received were not to acquire or to construct an asset. The second type of grants is grants related to assets. I've told you that can also be called capital grants. These are grants that are related to a specific asset. That is, they are assistance by government to an entity so that they can acquire or construct an asset. Since revenue items or revenue expenditure are usually included in the statement of profit or loss, therefore, Revenue grants will pass through the income statement. That is, revenue grants will pass through the statement of profit or loss. So, let's look at the presentation of revenue grants. Presentation. How are the revenue grants? presented in the financial statement. So, revenue grants can be presented in two ways. Number one, we have as a credit in the income statement. As a credit in the income statement. As a credit in the statement of profit or loss. That is, such grants will be recorded as other income, other income in the face of the statement of profit or loss. The second method is deducted from the related expenses. Deducted from the related expenses. 
expenses, the expenses for which that grant have been received, you can deduct that grant from that item of expenses. If a grant is received as a contribution uh, to the payroll, that means all grant, if you want to use this second approach, you can just deduct it from the wages or salary or the payroll of the entity. In both cases, grants should be reported on a systematic basis in the statement of profit or loss. So you should report grants on a systematic basis. Grants should be reported on a systematic systematic basis on the face of the statement of profit or loss. I've told you that you can treat the grant as a credit in this income statement. That is, you should treat it as other income in the face of statement of profit or loss. Or you should deduct the grant from the related expenses. These are the two ways of presenting the government grant in the face of the financial statement. But I've told you, in both cases, grants should be reported on a systematic basis on the face of the statement of profit or loss. What does that mean? That is, you should recognize that grant on a straight line basis, just like the straight line method of depreciation. So you divide it by the number of periods. So these are the methods of recognizing or of presenting government grant in the face of the statement of profit or loss. I repeat, one way is by reporting it as other income. You treat it as a credit in the face of statement of profit or loss. Another way is by deducting it from the related expenses. Deduct it from the expenses to which that grant have contributed. During the year in the June 30, 2019, Bobo Niche Enterprises, having qualified for the 25% local equity participation, received the following grants from Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. One, on September 1st, 2018, a grant of 1 million naira was received from the CBN. The grant was in respect of training casual workers. The training cost, the training cost incurred by Bobonisha Enterprises in this respect was 1.75 million naira. Two, on June 1st, 2019, a grant of 2.5 million naira was made by CBN. The grant was in respect of relocation cost that Bobo Nisha Enterprises had incurred. For movement of its business to a free trade zone allocated to medium, small, and micro enterprises, MSME, the grant is repayable in full unless Bobo Nisha Enterprises recruits at least. 100 employees from the free trade zone, local area, by the end of the month of June 2019. Bobo is finding it difficult to recruit this number of employees in the local area. Required, prepare extra to statement of financial position and statement of profit or loss of Bobo Nisha Enterprises for the year ended, June 30, 2019, using the two more methods of presenting grants in the financial statement of business entities. I can match with July 2020 financial reporting. Now let's have the solution to the question. Solution. Method one. We are, we are going to net grant of the related expenditure. Net grant, net grant of the related expenditure. That is, we are going to subtract 
gang grants from the related expenditure. The name of the entity is Gogbo Dishi Enterprises. Now they have Gogbo Dishi Enterprises. There are three sets of items in the question in ICA March, July 2020, but I have removed the grant related to an asset. The section that involves an asset, I've removed that. I will consider that in my next video. We're going to share enterprises. So, statement of financial position. Extract as at June 30. 2020, 2019. So, let's go back to the question. On September 1st, 2018, a grant of 1 million was received from CBN. The grant was in respect of training cash flow workers. The training cost in care by Bobo Nishi Enterprises in respect of the or uh, in, in this respect was 1.75 million. So this is a grant related to income. Remember, we are the grant items. If it does not relate to asset, then that means you will have it in relation to income. See training cost is not an asset. So that is to show that this is a grant related to income. So you, it will appear in the statement of profit or loss. So, but remember, the method we are using is to net grant of the related expenditure. The related expenditure in this case is training cost. Since it is a training cost and not a statement of financial position item, that means this transaction will not appear in the statement of financial position. It's not a statement of financial position item. So it is off balance sheet. So we will use it in the statement of profit or loss. So then the number two. On June 1st, 2019, a grant of 2.5 million was made by CBN. The grant was in respect of relocation cost. This does not relate to assets too. We would say enterprises had incurred for movement of its business to a free trade zone allocated to medium, small, and micro enterprises. Slim have omitted certain information from the question. The grant is repayable in full. Global share enterprises recruits. Global share enterprises recruits at least 100 employees from the free trade zones. This is the condition upon which this grant will be recognized. Remember, I've given you the general principle. The general principle I gave you is that the grant will never appear in the statement of profit or loss if the condition associated with that grant have not, cannot be met or have not been met. So the condition is that they must recruit 100 employees for the free trade zone local area by the end of the month of June 2019. But we were told Bobo say is finding it difficult to recruit this number of employees in the local areas since they were finding it difficult. That means it is not certain that this condition will be met. Since the condition cannot be met, this grant will never appear in the statement of profit or loss. Because if that condition is not satisfied, that means that grant will still be repaid. So we will recognize it as a liability. You have it as a liability, it can only be recognized as an income in the statement of profit or loss where that condition can be met. But where it is not met, that means it is repayable. It is repayable if that condition cannot be met. So in this case, 
we only recognize this as liability, liability of 2.5 million in the statement of financial position. So we have government grant repayable. No, it will be repaid if that condition cannot be met. So, and the amount involved is 2.5 million. That is for the Roman figure 2. This 2.5 million will be repaid if that condition is not met. That is, if they cannot recruit 100 employees in the free trade zone local area. So that means this sum, the grant will be repaid back to the government. So that is why we recognize it as a liability. You can only have it as an income where that condition are met. Now, let's have the statement of profit or loss. Statement, Bobo Nishi Enterprises. Bobo Nishi Enterprises. We have statement, statement, of profit or loss. Extract for the year ended June 30, 2019. Back to the question. On September 1st, 2018, a grant of 1 million was received from the CBA. The grant was in respect of training casual workers. The training costs incurred by Global Nisha Enterprises in this respect was 1.75 million. We are not given any probable condition which you may think the condition may not be achieved. So I want to believe that this condition is achievable. So that is why there are no further information that will make you believe that this grant will be repaid to government. So in that case, you will treat it in the statement of profit or loss. So if you want to treat it in the statement of profit or loss, this is 1.75 million. The grant received is 1 million. So remember, we are letting it this time around. We have to subtract this grant receipt from the training cost of 1.75 million. So the training cost, let's have it in the statement of profit or loss. Training cost. So which is 1.75 million minus 1 million. Then that means you'll be left with 750,000. That is how that grant will be recognized in the financial statement under the first method. Now let's have method two now. Method two. That is, you want to treat the, the, the grant as a credit in the statement of profit or loss. Credit, that is, we are not going to net it. Where grant will not be net. Where grant will not be deducted from the expenditure expenditure it's released so where it will not be deducted from the expenditure it's released to that is you want to treat it as a credit in the statement of profit or loss so we have Bobo Nishi Enterprises statement of Financial position extract as at June thirty, twenty nineteen, where you will not need to deduct grant from the statement of. Uh, from the related expenditure, that is expenditure to which it relates. So that is the method we are using now. You don't need to net it. So, on September 1st, 2018, 
A grant of one million was received from CBA. The grant was in respect of training casual workers. The training cost incurred by Google Asia Enterprises in this respect was 1.75 million. There is condition, there is no condition that there is no information that this condition cannot be met. So in that case, this grant will be treated in the statement of profit or loss. But the second grant, on June 1st, 2019, a grant of 2.5 million was made by CBA. The grant was in respect of relocation cost. This one cannot be treated in the statement of profit or loss because you are not certain that they'll be able to recruit 100 employees from the free trade zones. Since you are not, going, you are not sure, it is this one that will be treated as a liability in the statement of financial position. So in that case, we have current liabilities. Government grant. Government grant repayable. That is 2.5 million naira. This will be recognized as current liability in the statement of financial position. Now, let's have a statement of profit or loss extract. Bugbu Nishi Enterprises. Statement of profit or loss. Extract for the year ended. Ended December, eh, June 30, 2019. So you don't need to net it. So that means you have your training cost. Training cost will be reported separately. The training cost incurred by Google Nishi Enterprises in this respect was 1.75 million. So you have that to be 1.75 million, 1 million 750,000. This is expenditure outflows. Then other income. Government grant received. How much was received? One million was received. So you treat that as an income, as a credit in the statement of profit or loss. Remember, room I've got two. We said that will not be recorded in the statement of profit or loss. That will be treated as liability so that is the solution to the question this marks the end of the solution to this question and in my next video i will examine the grant related to an asset please make sure you drop the love emoji and also share the video with others thanks for watching Ezekiel.